Salutations. Let's talk about crop circles, all right? The phenomenon of crop circles. And I want to come with this from two different perspectives, all right? Two different bodies of work. Starting with um, the Isseti Ranch. I was just came from a conference from there about uh, five days ago. And I met, I was on a panel with uh, several other presenters. And one of them was a lady by the name of Patty Greer. And Patty Greer has done several movies over crop circles, all right? This is one right here, her latest one, The Crop Circle Diaries. I got a copy of it from her before uh, the conference was over. Okay, um, the other one would be uh, work done by Dr. Linda Moulton Howe. I kind of am most interested in those two on account that they've spent so much time in crop circles themselves. So I think that gives them a little more, oh, say validation than others. Okay, but I want to start off with Dr. Greer, or Patty Greer's work, The Crop Circle Diaries here, all right? Now, um, this is coming, it's a very interesting body of work, all right? It kind of is coming from uh, a former scientist by the name of uh, William Levengood. Levengood? Yeah, that's his name. That he was uh, actually dealing with a lot of things on crop circles concerning with um, the, like, the seed of them and that he thinks that they thought, thought they were plasma, a type of charged plasma. Now, in the beginning of this movie, Patty has identified a well-known old clip from 1996 in England that has these plasma balls going around a field creating a, a crop circle, all right? During that, she actually reverses it, reverses the, that footage and uh, puts it on a 30 second um, delay. And you can actually see at one point, two of these spears, a line of communication, just millisecond line for a millisecond, a line of communication going between these two spears that actually looks like some type of binary code to me, all right? And basically what she's coming from, from the work of Dr. from Le uh, Levengood is that the crop circles are actually earth chakras is what the crop circles are. Earth chakras and that they're coming from the earth, all right? Now what's interesting in that body of work that he had done is that a lot of seeds he did work with germany germinating seeds that were inside of the circle and outside now he found that the seeds that were that appeared to be almost demolished and uh, completely stripped uh actually went into a gestation like a cryogenic sleep almost for i think it was four days 20 days 18 days something like that but afterwards when he germinated them these seeds yielded like 40 more percent product whatever it was than the others and not just that so what we're dealing with is actually what's called an avalanche all right electron avalanche so you've got the plasma when it's exposed to the crop circles itself all right you've got uh, microwaves that is actually heating up and bending the stems like that and that's also doing some damage to the seeds and then you've got what's called an electron avalanche which is being exposed to a lot of electrons. And what that is, is very high energy. So what you're dealing with is plants that have been exposed to a very high energy, high plasma that has caused them to reconfigurate their energetic systems. That's huge. That's huge. And the fact that no one's talking about that kind of blows me away, all right? But that's research that needs to be given out. Okay, she also said some things that she thinks that a lot of these crop circles are producing, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, more, uh, not just um, communication from earth to the sun and things of that nature. And that very well may be so. I kind of agree with that to a certain degree, all right? But as far as her contention that they come from the earth only, I don't agree with. Because I say that based on some of the other phenomenons we've seen, even that video, it appears that these plasma balls that are creating these go back up. Sometimes they come from the sky and go back up. And that's been reported by several witnesses. So if they were strictly an earth phenomenon, why would they be going back up to the sky? That that encounter, that implies there's something else going on, all right? Now that, in, with her, was a very good piece of body of work, I thought. That portion of um, this movie here and what she's saying, all right? Now, when I asked, Ms. asked uh, Patty Greer about Linda Moulton Howe and how much their work may go together, 
uh, she wasn't very receptive of that, kind of cut Dr. Linda Moulton out down a bit. Not my business there, okay? But uh, I think to just dismiss her work is invalid also. So the next one we're gonna do is go over the work of Dr. Linda Moulton Powell. on to the work of Dr. Linda Moulton Howe. When I'd asked Patty Greer about Linda Moulton Howe's research, she said, Linda doesn't look at the science, watch my movie. Well, I do, and I did. <laughs> Linda Moulton Howe, what I found interesting about her is um, she brings up with her research in crop circles, what is uh, self-activating software, all right? And she had some information that was sent from the Carrot, Carrot Institute that was supposedly in Silicon Valley back engineering um, nanotechnology and holographic projectors and things that were dealing with self-activating machines, all right? So um, <clears throat> at a time, I think it was in 2000, around 2002 or three, there was something that was called the Chad Dragonfly Drones. And there were two found, two seen. One, I think, at Big Basin, and the other in Arizona, it might have been. Anyone can Google those. The Chad Dragonfly drones. Okay, and they, these are things that kind of filtered in and flashed in for just a few minutes and seemed to be going in and out of phase that people took pictures of, all right? They're very odd looking satellites or some type of artificial intelligence, all right? But what's noted on those is that on the wing of some of those and on the boxes are these odd symbols, all right? The same symbols that the Carrot Institute had, and she gave blueprints for that, that are actually look like crop circles, but are actually self-activating symbols. I myself, as an experiencer, have seen self-activating symbols on some of the instruments on board crafts, all right? So that does exist. That is a real technology that has to be acknowledged, all right? But at this point, <clears throat> excuse me, dealing with Dr. Howell's research makes us wonder something is that why these things were visible, these, these dragonfly drones were visible in the sky for just a second. What was it that was disrupting this back engineered technology that involves holographic projection, anti-gravity, okay? We know these are two things that have been back engineered. What was it that was disrupting that? And was that truly from Silicon Valley, these machines, or are they things that have been in our atmosphere for thousands, if not millions of years? terraforming and this takes us to things like um, Stonehenge all right Stonehenge is resonating at I want to say it's 12 Hertz which is um, the same frame time the same thing the same frequency that brain entrainment occurs at okay the same thing people in the binaural beats and all that right now you've got Stonehenge that are resonating at that same range all right so what were we looking at here some type of a terraforming going on is that what the crop circles are doing as well? Are they terraforming? Is that the system we're seeing here? Self-activating software? It's, I think it's open for thought, honestly, all right? So what I'm kind of coming from is this. Instead of the dispersion that we see in this field so much right now, that sometimes are ego, egos and just arguments that I think are not necessary, instead we need to start conglomerating the information, all right? What Dr. Howell is saying, among with what Patty Greer is saying. What Patty Greer is saying and Dr. Livingood discovered about plasma is serious right now. Just on my trip to SETI, Peter Maxwell Slattery, my friend in Solretta, they actually caught a scientist that's dealing with advanced uh, plasma and the, the plasma pen and a plasma helmet and things that felt alive to them. This is real science. Science that once existed here that's coming back around right now, all right? So once again, back to the plasma part and back to self-activating machines and software. I think terraforming, I think all this is not the separate things that we think they are, all right? Maybe not even the binary, binary aspect of it also. So I just wanted to throw that out, all right? And this is food for thought for whoever wants to listen to it. <laughs>
Um, once again, that's two bodies of work, crop circles, just trying to take an overview of them all together and put the information together of what we're seeing here. All right, remember the electron avalanche, you can look that up, what some of these plants are being exposed to, how they have more potential for redesigning their seed becomes more viable after being exposed to this high energy. So remember, when you're exposed to UFO energy, high field energy, what does it do to us? Some of this is positive, all right? It needs to be acknowledged as far as zero point technology goes. Patty Greer thinks some of the crop circles are zero point energy devices. I can't say that's wrong or right. Some of it does conform. So there's a lot of information coming through through these crop circles. I think they're coming from the earth and from the sky. It's not the separate things they want them to be. Anyway, I think I'm about out of time. So I want to just leave that with you. God bless. If you like the videos, please put a like on them. Please share it with your friends. Um, I'm hoping that some of them make sense. A lot of people seem to be watching them. So God bless to all. This is for consciousness. Amen.